yeah yeah uh hi my name is rohit shah i'm from calcutta india uh, i live in bombay these days um i'm a photographer um yeah like uh, so i i studied photography from national institute of design uh, which is a premier institute in india and while studying there during my last year while i had to apply for my degree course uh the final paper uh that is where i began working on this book that or rather the project that we talk about today so it was um it was a newspaper basically which actually began this entire question about what i'm going to do for the next 6 months so i i found a newspaper which said eram sharmila broke her 16 year long fast uh, re- demanding the repeal of oxfa and uh, till then i had no idea of who ram sharmila was and you know i i knew what is ofspa it's an act called armed forces special powers act which gives the army officials special authority to arrest and kill anyone on mere suspicion now um, i knew about this act not much but uh, uh, and this was happening in a state called manipur which is a northeastern state of india and it's very close to calcutta but i had no idea about who ram sharmila was till then so i think that fact really jolted me and you know i i thought like okay so let's start researching on it that is how i got to know and so i thought okay i think it's important for people like me to educate myself what is happening in my own country first and number two it was more like addressing what happened 16 long years back to talk about her run for election was necessary but i as a student i had around 6 to 8 months time because of my school guidelines so i thought to keep my project very limited so i thought i would go to the village maybe where that incident happened maybe talk to the different families if they allow me you know in in their space and also follow iram sharmila till her election date so um, what happened was by 17th october i had reached manipur i had no idea no i knew no one i just knew a friend but luckily then the very next day that is the 18th october iram sharmila were, had decided to announce her political party at the press club and i was lucky enough to get to see her the very next day and i saw her announce her political party now uh, on that very day i met a journalist at the press club who went like who are you because uh, i i look different from the crowd so then she spoke about this organization called ifam ifam is an organization whose uh, initials are whose full form is extra judicial execution victim families association of manipur now these people uh, like they are basically the widows of the victims or the mothers of the victims who have made this community and they are the one who are who were actually doing the work that iram sharmila was doing then like writing down petitions from the family and with which had like they were filling up data collection forms which they would submit to the supreme court of india and these collection forms had details like name of the victim name of the perpetrator uh, the place where the incident took place date uh, and also events right before the person was last seen and so those things became the text you know so what happened was i had no idea what i was walking into so I, i walked up to this organization and i told them that i am here to talk about malo massacre and like you know one day 10 victims and 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 till then i thought that was the worst that had happened to manipur like i knew there were bad events happening but in my in my head that was the worst that had happened uh, so she totally agreed to you know so so i basically asked could i volunteer there to help them because they needed help to uh, convert the data they had been collecting for the past 6 years and um, so they were all files they were all tactile data and they had to be transferred well, converted to a digital data so that when the when when it goes to the supreme court they're all in like you know well tabular form nothing gets missed and they needed people who could handle computer and just transfer this data and i don't know how like the luck aligned and i was like can i can i can i help and they were like yeah we need people who can understand computer and we need data and then i told them like 
this is my project I'm doing. So can I be photographing them as well? And could you help me with the Malum Massacre victim? They were like uh, Malum Massacre victims, right? So the, the main female who, who is the president so-called, so she walked me to the cupboard and she opens a cupboard, okay? And in that cupboard, Alexis, there were files after files, your wise. And out of which she points out one folder and she goes like, this one is Malum Massacre. And I see the intensity of it. And she's like, this is from 1979 to 2012, 33 years of violence. And I get taken aback. I, I get a shock, which I've, because till that time, till that moment, it was all about one day, one incident, 10 victims, trying, still trying to figure out and then realizing what is fake encounters, what is that number? Five. So 1528 is basically, it has been alleged that 1528 people died in extrajudicial killings carried out by the Indian Armed Forces between 1979 to 2012 in Manipur. All this text, which was there in the data collection form, which spoke about how the victim was last seen, was, was what became the main text for me to how I was looking at Manipur. So my time would be like my office hours would be from nine o'clock in the morning to four o'clock, five o'clock in the evening. After that, I would go back home, spend my time thinking about, okay, what all I've read today. And, and then I would have my friends and tell, and what, what I would be doing is like, I would be making a list of all the places I would read in those 10, 20 folders every day. And I would ask my friend if they could drive me there. Now, now what used to happen was, and I was carrying a very tiny camera. I was using a Ricoh GR. So it was, it was always in my pocket. It's always with me. And it was more than looking and photographing. I felt and photographed. It was more like that because I reacted to those places because it was a kind of trance, a kind of high I was in every time I walked out of the, uh, of that office reading about all the killings and then, you know, walking when the memory is still fresh and you go there and walk around with people walking around and things are still not settled yet. It's, and I think those were how I reacted to that entire place. And I kept going back to different districts and then more file after file. Yeah, that's pretty much it. What, what, what I feel about it, I think photography is a tool. Like, yeah, and like, it's more like a pen. You make notes with your pen in your diary. You, you use your camera and get sick. And then you, so I think when I'm, so I, I try different mediums always. I, I try different mediums to take, if I could extract things and feel that if I can create the same experience outside that place. So to, I think to, to create an experience I try using those tools and if they work out and if they are like, it makes sense to the project, not just like that because or else it's just the tools which just pops out and not what I'm saying. So I think, I think that, that if, if a project requires certain things and it makes the experience better, I think that is how I, I choose things. Yeah. The main idea is what, what needs to be told about, like, what is the story about? Right. And then if gathering those things together makes the story way more clear, I think, you know, then, then like, I wouldn't call anyone that it's not art or not. This is art or not art. Like, you know, like this, that's, that's not the case at all. I, it's, I, I think no matter whatever we do, everything has been done. Like, and I think with the internet, it's, it's everywhere. And we are also influenced by anything we have been looking at in our subconscious. So, but then I think what we come up with it, how our head is working right now, I think it's all, it's, it's like that. And then it's more about how clear we are in telling our story or, and if it helps, yeah.